I figured this video is a little bit overdue and yet timely in a very strange way. I'll clarify for this. I had a Boss Katana Mark 1 50 watt combo and in 2022 I did a video on how I was using mine as well as some tips and tricks and its overall value. Uh, I was quite happy with it overall. But on Memorial Day weekend of 2023, I scored a Boss Katana Mark II 50 watt for $137, used of course. And I decided the price was too good to pass up on an upgrade. A couple of weeks ago, Boss announced the Gen 3 version of the Katana. And I figured I would share my experiences of the past year using the Mark II 50 watt and compare it to with what other YouTubers are saying about this new generation three. So, uh, I got an email, uh, the beginning of Memorial day weekend of 2023 from the music mill in Manchester, New Hampshire. I get this every week. Uh, it, it shows their latest new and used gear and this caught my eye. I'll put the ad up right now. Uh, it came in at, $169 and I decided to call them and I asked them if they would put it on hold for me as it was a little bit of a hike for me to get up there. Uh, when I called, they said, by the way, we're having our Memorial Day sale this weekend. You'll save 20% off. And I told them, put it on hold. I'll be there within the hour. And I scooted up there and I grabbed it. Now, I should mention this video is in no way sponsored by Boss or the Music Mill. I paid for this amp with my own money uh, and <laughs> I've paid more for drive pedals than I have for this amp. So this was a steal. Uh, one good thing is that all the patches and the sounds that I made with my Mark I were able to be ported over to the Mark II amp. Uh, how, however, one thing I wanted to point out, I had some issues and it took me a bit to realize that each version of the amp has its own specialized Boss Tone Central app. So I plugged my Mark II amp using the Mark I software, and I got a lot of weirdo errors that made me think that something was wrong with the amp. So once I rectified that situation, everything went smoothly. Uh, now again, I'm referencing the Mark I and the Mark II amps. They're the 50 watt models. They're the bottom end of their product line, but they're certainly not lacking. And before we go any further though, this is the typical YouTuber statement. If you like this channel, hit the subscribe button. The bell icon will let you know in this new video. I, there's like over 98% of the viewers that check out my videos, you're not subscribers. So if I'm showing up in your feeds because of the YouTube algorithm, uh, that's great, but if you subscribe, you won't miss out on any future videos that I make. And if you like this video, please uh, click the thumbs up button. If you want to share it, well, there's a button for that as well. Okay, well, back to the amp. Okay, so I like my original Mark I Katana. It was a great pedal platform, and it was very easy to dial in tones. You know, it makes it, it made for a very great grab and go amp that was super reliable. Uh, if I recall correctly, also, John Bollinger from Premier Guitar has said in one of his columns that he gigs regularly with one of those in Nashville uh, because of its reliability and the fact that, you know, it, he gigs out enough, he doesn't have to worry about some boutique amp getting beaten up. And the Mark and the Katana sounds great, so you're not really slumming it either. Uh, the big downside on the Mark I is I don't think it really got a lot of attention Overall, Boss doesn't kind of uh, support things like patches and downloads on older uh, products. So when the Mark I came out, it was really great, and they had this whole Tone Central uh, portal where you could share patches and stuff, but they really weren't, there really wasn't much there for it. When the Mark II came out, it definitely expanded with artist downloads and presets and all things you could you could bring into your amp to, to help tweak it and give you maybe some set ideas of how 
uh, some of these patches were created. I found it very helpful seeing how other players uh, use certain settings to dial in tones that I normally wouldn't go that way just because of how I think as a player. Uh, a lot of times players will say, hey, I don't want to have a, a, a clean amp with a tube screw not on it. I'll just just make make a great amp sound, forget the tube screamer, but sometimes that comes into play and the, how you use that can be a factor of making some really great sounds. So for foot switching though, uh, I kept my Bright Onion uh, cat foot switch pedal that I've been using with my Mark 1. It basically means I can access all four presets easily. Uh, generally I have a, a, a clean preset that's kind of like uh, you know, it's just like an amp that's just starting to, to break up a little bit, and I use that with my pedal board. Uh, then I generally have a clean chorus delay and reverb version. Uh, I also happen to have uh, a Dumble-ish patch that I downloaded uh, from another YouTuber. I'll put that link in that area below so you can check it out. If you have a Mark II, it'll be perfect. Uh, I did some minor mods to it, and it really came out quite nice. And it's the sound I used on the lead guitar parts uh, of the the song in the beginning. And I also happen to have a, a really high gain, uh, crazy, super, uber, mezzo boogie, grind it out type of preset uh, that I love. It's great for low end riffing. Uh, and I've also, like I said, I've downloaded all the available presets from Boss's Tone Central. I also purchased a few from uh, these gentlemen over in the UK called the Studio Rats. Uh, the guitar player has, makes his own katana patches and he does sell them. I'll put a link for those also in the area below so you can check those out. Uh, some of them are free. I believe you have to do, you do have to pay for some of them though, but uh, a Mark II amp will also run Mark I patches, uh, just not the other way around. So if you have a Mark I amp, you're not going to be able to download Mark II patches, so it's not backwards compatible. Uh, I have to say, I haven't really used this live. Uh, generally, I use my Boss ME70 for a lot of live stuff for my cover band, and I run that direct into the board. But I can see using this amp in that manner, uh, running this direct into the board if the need arises. And I've even thought of kind of fitting this with an upgraded Celestion speaker, maybe a red back, uh, just to kind of enhance of the sounds that are, the great sounds that are coming out of it. But stock, it's not lacking any way. Uh, uh, I primarily use this for home practice and recording. And of course, I used it for all the, all the guitar parts in the beginning, the clean parts, as well as the, the lead bits. Uh, and for what it brings to the table, it, it really works nicely also with, uh, with, pedals and other items that I, I bring into it. So it's kind of hard to beat overall. Uh, and it, it kind of gives you room for expansion for whatever else may be coming down the pike for gear. If you get a new drive pedal, you're not really, you're not going to really have to sacrifice one thing for another. It works like a great amp that happens to have all these other great effects and other things built into it. Now, the big changes for the Mark II compared to the Mark I were some of the variants on the amp models. They have another whole other bank of amp sounds you can get to. And there's also, with the great uh, new upgrade for the Mark IIs, where they had they went with stacked pots for the effects section. Uh, the previous version had a single knob, and everything from before noon covered one effect, and everything afternoon did a different effect. Uh, if you ran into a situation where you maybe wanted to alter an effect and the knob wasn't in the right spot, uh, kind of tweaking it kind of made you a little, especially on the fly, a little uh, leery of maybe moving a chorus when you don't really want to move the chorus, but you want to change uh, a drive setting that's on that same knob. So with these concentric stack pots, they, it keeps those two worlds separate. You don't have to worry about if you're going to be making adjustments at a gig, uh, like I said, on the fly. Uh, the variants of the amps are also really nice. Uh, they they do add some different flavors, uh, which is really great. They're not better or worse. Some of them may work for different things. Some of them may not. It's kind of just more of what uh, sauce you want to throw into the mix with those. Uh, I've also mentioned the Tone Central app. The Tone Central app also offers up a couple of things that you, you don't physically have on the control panel. They happen to have a presence knob on the inside, as well as a tone shaping EQ function that kind of can give you like an overall EQ uh, 
adjustment for the, the amp itself, as well as all the other functionalities that you can get in there as far as different types of amp, of, of microphones, and where you place the microphones. Uh, it's not very visual, but it, it you can make changes for things like that at, inside there as well. Uh, the, e the effects, they've been some up upgrades on some of the effects, but I, to be honest with you, the first, the Mark One wasn't slouching, so it's kind of like, yeah, it's be it's better. Uh, it's so, I, but I don't think if you have a, it's a big, super big leap where you're going to be like not liking one versus the other, depending on what you're doing with it. Uh, it's definitely an evolution from the Mark One in many ways, and for the price I paid at one hundred and thirty-seven dollars, it was well worth it. Uh, I ended up giving my Mark One to my cousin's son who had started playing guitar. Uh, last year, it, it, so I'm, it's getting some use from him. If you have a Mark One and you want to upgrade to the Mark II, uh, depending how you use your amp, you may not be missing out. But if you find a good deal on one, like I did, that might be worth it. Uh, with the Generation Three announcement this past month and the typical uh, product dump YouTube video onslaught that comes with it, uh, I've been going over all these new features on the Generation Three, and uh, as I don't have one here to deep dive into one of them. I still have some thoughts after looking at Boss's information as well as all those YouTube videos, especially on that 50 watt version, which is what I'm comparing uh, apples to apples to in this one. Um, the big upgrades I've seen is the headphone out has a stereo setup and it's which is great for stereo effects in your headphones, which is really cool. Uh, there's also a Bluetooth uh, compatibility option that Boss has been uh, throwing at a whole bunch of things so you can now you you get the separate Bluetooth module, plug it into your amp. You can now do editing on a phone or a tablet. So you don't, if you want to deep dive into certain effects or play around with uh, some of the presets or the libraries, you can do that uh, without plugging into a computer or a laptop. You can just do it with usually something you would have at a gig, which is usually a smartphone or a tablet. Um, there's microphone choice and placement, but it's kind of got a little bit more visual cues so you can see it in there. Uh, all great pluses. They also happen to have a, a pushed type of amp version, which is kind of neat. Uh, how they, you know, basically can you can make it sound like more like a real amp in a few settings. I've I have not had that. I've kind of been able to get those sounds without a lot of tweaking. So uh, I'd really have to explore it to really see the value on that aspect. Uh, of course, all the new marketing materials come out that the sound has been upgraded as well. Of course, it is. It's the new version. And all these are really great additions, but not having those uh, on my Mark II doesn't make me want to run out and get the, the, the Generation 3, especially a new one at full retail price. In fact, whenever, uh, whenever I've been finding uh, on those YouTube videos for the Generation, uh, for the generation 3 model launch, uh, they, they do show off all these great features, but nothing seems like a big game changer to me. And in fact, in a few videos, it seems like the viewer is really trying to present all these new features as the new hotness that you really want, but it's it doesn't seem to they're very it, there's as much enthusiasm as there have been on things like the Mark Tour or other products Boss has made. So I'm betting dealers are going to be having deals on Mark IIs, which are, I think right now, running at around $229 at a street price. So deals may be had out there uh, in the new and in the used markets. With the Generation 3s coming out, these will be the new standard. That's what they're going to, they're, they're going to have those uh, Mark 1s and the Mark II, the Mark 1s obviously. They've been, they're, all, they're still a great value in the used market, and I think the Mark IIs are going to continue that uh, trend. I do wonder if some of this could have been done through some sort of firmware upgrade, or at least some of it, uh, as compared to a full product release, especially in the 50 watt. There's not too much physical difference on what you get on the control surface, and in the app does look a bit different, but I'm just kind of curious of, of why making such uh, not a complete, full leap into the net what i would consider the next a, a full yes you should make that upgrade because this i'm just looking at going well it's cool you have this but it shouldn't be a, a deal breaker if i have the older version they're still great amps the mark ii 
Katanas, they outsold their competitors with all the features they're offered as well as the sounds. And finding one of one of these at a, a great price it is a great value. And with so many of these out there new and used, finding one at a good price shouldn't be an issue. But this is kind of the downside for Boss products. Because they make such great stuff, the older versions hold up over time and springing harder in cash for the new hotness is, might not be something a lot of players can justify. I still use a very old Boss ME70 and I use it live. I have not really felt a lot of limitations to it. And this is kind of in that same boat where I'm using it and I don't feel like I have run into any barriers when I've been trying to come up with a great sound and make it work for whatever I'm doing. So let me know what you guys think uh, about the Boss Katanas. Are, do you have an old one? Do you have a Mark One? Do you have a Mark II? Uh, how are you using it? Are you using, are you, do you have like me the, the, the base model, not base, but like the entry level or the lower level model, uh, 50 watt, do you have one of the heads? How about one of the artist models? Let me know how you're using one if you have it. I'd love to find out. There's a comment section in the space below for that. So I'd love to hear from you. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care.